I took them very legally, and I wasn't hiding them. We had boxes on the front of the, and a lot of those boxes had clothing, and a lot, we're moving out, okay? Unfortunately, we're moving out of the White House, and because we're moving out of the White House, our country's going to hell. But um, we weren't hiding anything. He was. Can somebody tell Donald Trump that he has the right to remain silent? Because this guy will not stop yapping and lying about the document case. For someone who has nothing to hide, it's pretty odd how he made his attorney lie to the FBI. He told Nauta to move boxes of documents and conceal them. He even suggested his attorney to hide or destroy documents called for by the grand jury subpoena. He spent over a year obstructing the investigation into the document case, and that is why he's in trouble. You're watching Watching the Gen Z blueprint with Adam Mockler, take a look at this clip of Brian Butler, Trump's employee, saying that they were being pretty secretive. And he's like, hey, by the way, it's a secret. Don't tell anybody while it's coming. And well, why? Take a look at this next clip of Trump still talking about Hillary's emails and thinking that the popular computer program Bleachbit, which lets you free up disk space, is actually an acid test. I don't even know, just watch. It's egregious what he did. But by the way, they released Hillary Clinton. She hammered her phones. She used uh, all sorts of acid testing and everything else. They call it uh, bleach bit, but it's essentially acid that will destroy everything, <laughs> you know, within 10 miles. I mean, sh what she did was unbelievable. Nothing happens to her. Nothing happens to Bill Clinton. He took it out in his socks. You know, it was the famous socks case, which he actually ended up winning. Keep in mind, the 2012 case involving Bill Clinton in his sock drawer is not comparable to what Donald Trump and his team did whatsoever. These two things are apples and oranges, and that's what legal experts are saying. The Clinton materials were audio tapes of conversations with a historian that incidentally recorded some calls on official business, said Margulies, who's a legal expert at Roger Williams University. In contrast, the document documents that Trump kept were all presidential records from the moment they arrived at the Oval Office from the other parts of the government, not to mention the game of cat and mouse that Trump and his team played with the FBI for a year. Watch this next clip. Are you ever lonely? So I was, over the years, I love history, I study history, and I was always told that Andrew Jackson, as a president, was treated the absolute worst. He was just really lambasted, and I heard Abraham Lincoln was second, but he was in a thing called the Civil War, so you can understand that. But Andrew Jackson was really, really treated badly. In fact, his wife died during the process. I mean, a lot of people say she died because of the way they were treated. I mean, she was heartbroken and, and broken in so many other ways. And I heard that for years. And I look now, even last night I was saying it, I said, there's no, I don't care, Andrew Jackson or anybody else, Nobody has, when you think of the, the fake things, nobody's been treated like Trump in terms of badly. Russia, 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 Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine. Everything was a scam. And it literally starts the new one. As you win one, you start the other. Impeachment hoax number one, impeachment hoax number two. All hoaxes and scams. Try telling JFK that you're the worst treated president in American history because you decided to show people classified documents and hide those documents for over a year because you decided to spread unsubstantiated claims about election fraud and then pressure officials into overturning results based on those unsubstantiated claims. Better yet, I have a clip of Trump right here from the same interview talking about how he's been in legal trouble since before he was even running for president, which shows that this isn't just a witch hunt to affect his campaign. He's a genuine criminal who's committed crimes over the past decades. Watch. I had to be tough. And then people say he's tough. But they put me under the gun from long before I got invested. But before I got elected, I was under a gun like nobody and probably no other president in history. Going this isn't the win you think it is, man, because your whole shtick right now is that you're only being pursued because you're running for office, but you're admitting right here that you were being pursued prior to that for very legitimate reasons. Now, I have a clip that infuriated me about Donald Trump lying about Biden's State of the Union performance, and I'm going to play a clip of Biden's actual State of the Union performance, and let's compare the two. Gets up and makes a speech the other day. He's screaming at everybody like a lunatic. And everybody said, oh, he made it. You know, he made it. He made it through, barely. He made it through the speech, and he was all jacked up. And you just wonder what's going on. This is a very dangerous time for our country. Let's immediately debunk this claim that Biden barely made it through his speech by showing the last minute of his State of the Union where he was on absolute fire. Watch. The issue facing our nation isn't how old we are. 
It's how old are our ideas? Yeah. Hate, anger, revenge, retribution are the oldest of ideas. Yeah. But you can't lead America with ancient ideas that only take us back. If you lead America, the land of possibilities, you need a vision for the future and what can and should be done. Yeah. Tonight, you've heard mine. I see a future where defending democracy, you don't diminish it. I see a future where we restore the right to choose and protect our freedoms, not take them away. So Trump is clearly misrepresenting Biden's State of the Union speech, and his MAGA fan base immediately adopted these talking points. The cool part is, I was in Rome, Georgia just a few days ago asking Trump supporters how they felt about Biden's performance, and they all gave the exact same answer. I wonder where they got it from. I missed it, but I saw bits and pieces of it. What'd you think? <laughs> oh, and the methamphetamines, he was on the other night at the very, very friendly, happy State of the Union address. He which did great. Sounded, yeah, he was campaigning. I thought he did great on the drugs they gave him before he talked. I think he was jacked up on something. So Biden is simultaneously an 81-year-old senile man on the brink of death who was also hyped up on methamphetamines or Adderall the whole time, which would increase his risk of a stroke greatly. I don't think his doctors would actually give him these drugs. And he's also more evil than Vladimir Putin, but also can't even run the country. It's so incoherent. But reality is often boring. It's a lot more fun to think of Biden as a criminal mastermind who's out to get MAGA rather than admitting that he's an old dude who has decades decades of experience in Washington, and because of that, he's got a great grasp on foreign policy, on domestic policy, on how to reach across the aisle and actually get things passed, even more so than Donald Trump, and even more so than Obama. He's been more effective than Obama in the past few years. I have one final clip of Donald Trump talking about how he fired Comey and that he might not be talking to us if he didn't fire Comey. The lack of self-awareness is insane. Watch the clip. I fired Comey very early. It was a good move. I, if I didn't, I might not be talking. And you got not investigated about. for it. Yeah, oh, I got investigated for it. By the way, I made the right move. That was a great move. That's getting rid of the deep state. But I got rid of him, got rid of a lot of other people. And we were doing... We were doing Donald that. Trump campaigned on getting rid of the deep state, but of course, in the process of being president, he created a deep state of his own. A massive amount of people in his presidency were charged, were convicted, and then were subsequently pardoned by Donald Trump for the crimes that they committed under him. Trump keeps replaying his greatest hits about Hillary's emails and about the deep state, but what he doesn't realize is that you cannot run as an outsider for a second time, especially when you already held the most powerful position in America, arguably the most powerful position position in the world, yet he still acts as if he's going to come in as an outsider and drain the swamp. He's acting as if he's an anti-establishment dude when he is the establishment. He is a billionaire who was the president of the United States. He is not one of us. He is not going to come in and magically drain the swamp. He is going to become the swamp and make sure that he has loyalists under him. If you made it this far, leave a like, subscribe, and comment a blue heart emoji, and I'll respond with a blue heart emoji. Have a great day.